If Scully's disenchantment with the idea of modern architects as heroic figures led him to embrace Robert Venturi in the 1960s, we should fill in an important gap in this chronology by going backwards in time for just a moment to say that he contributed no less to the rise of another important figure, Louis Kahn, in the previous decade. And you can see Kahn actually poking up to the left of Scully, way in the back there, um, in this image taken actually in, on a trip to Moscow. <coughs> As with Venturi, he was the first prominent architectural historian to demonstrate a serious interest in Kahn's work. And his monograph in George Braziller's series on contemporary architects, Louis I. Kahn, published in 1962, was the first book on Kahn, who Scully saw as representing something different among the heroic modernists whose work had so excited him. Kahn, to Scully, was no less ambitious, no less heroic, but his somber and distinctive modernism broke firmly from both the international style and the work of Frank Lloyd Wright. Scully presented Kahn as an architect who did not so much reject history as reach back into it in search of something basic, something primal, rough, and raw. His buildings, and I quote now from Scully, his buildings, despite their Roman connotations, are hard and normally without covering finishes. They are exactly what they seem, not for the faint-hearted, which is as it should be. Khan therefore requires wise and courageous clients who are willing to forego the gloss of superficial perfection in order to take part in a sustained and demanding process of which they may one day be proud. <laughs>